Hi there, this is Shion. Welcome to another new video which gives you the description of energy dispersive spectroscopy. So EDS, it is a very important spectroscopy technique to characterize the elements you, pres you have present in your surface of your specimen or of your material. So let's say you have surface, material, surface element nitrogen, oxygen or any other elements then you will get the different EDS spectra in your result and by checking that you can say okay in my material I have nitrogen also I have oxygen also so let's give an one example of the applications of the spectroscopy let's say you have a non covalently conjugated some polymer uh, with your uh, nanoparticle next you want to characterize after non-covalent conjugations okay whether the nitrogen oxygen this all the things are present on the surface or not if you have covalently conjugated then fine then you have any other spectroscopy technique like ir nmr but when your non-covalent conjugations ir nmr doesn't work so in that case eds spectroscopy will uh, give you a better result because that will that will just want to check whether nitrogen are there and reflect in the spectra whether oxygen are there and then reflect in the spectra or sulfur are there reflect in the spectra now in this video we will discuss that how it's formed how uh, the instrument checks nitrogen and makes a spectra checks oxygen and makes a spectra what is the principle what is the scientific principle behind it so to start with again taking back reference from my another video of same and tame if you have seen then you will probably know that uh, whenever electron beam are coming uh, on a surface of a specimen so electron are heating on the surface of the specimen and then two main types of collisions can happen one is the elastic scattering another is the back elastic scattering now this elastic scattering will generate the back scattered electron and inelastic scattering will generate the secondary electron and these two types of electron you know that is important for the image formations in scanning electron microscopy up to that is fine but in scanning electron microscopy video i said that along with that there are something uh, some generations of other subatomic particles like x-ray and we said some scanning electron microscopy machines actually also capture this x-ray to generate a better understanding of the surface of the specimen now that's point i left the point at that one, at that descriptions so that x-ray is actually used in eds spectroscopy and why I used, why I said that, okay, this X-ray also people sometimes use to make image because EDS actually sometimes can be also uh, be can be used inside the same inside the same instrument. So what they do, they use same to get the surface information. Along with also they connect uh, EDS spectroscopy machines, so they will get the surface informations as well as the elemental analysis. What type of elements you have on surface? That's why this X-ray was important at that time. So all the things, the spectra formations and all the things is based upon this X-ray generations of, uh, from the specimen of the surface, from the surface of the specimen. So now we, will, we have to look out very carefully that how this X-ray is generated and how uh, this X-ray generations can give different spectra uh, for different uh, atoms for different atoms let's say for nitrogen this uh, x-ray that will give the spectra that will be different and that's characteristics for that nitrogen atom only and let's say you are taking oxygen then also it will be different you are taking sulfur then also it will be different and why this difference comes that we have to find out and that is the topic to discuss in the video and that is actually the principle by which EDS spectroscopy works Okay. So, going to next slide, we can say this continuum X-ray productions actually are happening by uh, falling of a primary electron, primary electron beam on the surface of the specimen and then along with the other collisions, there is a for generations of continuum X-ray. 
so this x-ray is the main ingredient uh, to spectra formations for different elements uh, in EDS spectroscopy so first main message for the EDS spectroscopy is that some extra is generated which is extra which is generated upon the interactions of the primary electron beam with the surface atoms present in the specimen so this continuum extra generation is actually the main ingredient of the spectroscopy uh, spectra formations now how this extra formed to answer that questions you have to understand one thing that uh, the atomic structure uh, quite a uh, deep the atomic structure how the atomic structure presents so you know there are in atomic structure of an atom there is a nucleus which uh, contains a nucleus uh, so a proton a neutron and that is positively charged and surrounding that you have an electron cloud <coughs> electron cloud means <coughs> electrons are revolving uh, in an orbital and that is uh, denoted by orbital which is actually the part of a shell and that is we in uh, we denote uh, k shell m shell l shell and that we have seen that there is a, a nucleus here then there is a nucleus here and k shell you have l shell you have m shell you have and you know the k is actually denotes 1s orbital l actually denotes uh, 1 a uh, <coughs> 2s orbital 2p orbital so there are this type of orbitals so the main thing this type of orbitals are there where electrons are revolving that's fine and this type of in this type of orbitals there are some lower energy orbital and then some higher energy orbital so what orbital just after the nucleus that is very inside the atoms and that is core orbital that actually lower energy and what is the valence that is the along the periphery that is the outer surface of the atom that is actually higher energy orbital okay and that's called the valence orbital so inside you have the lower energy because that is more stabilized by the attraction force of a electron like a nucleus and the periphery are not that much stabilized that's why they are called the valence orbital okay so that are higher energy orbital now in EDS spectroscopy they actually give a primary electron beam which have some greater energy and that hits a uh, inside orbital electron so spectra spect in spectroscopy instrument a uh, electron beam will generate that hits towards the inner electron and the inner electron will be ionized ionized means electron will be removed from that orbital now whenever the electron will be removed means electron will be ionized there will be a formations of a gap and that gap will be filled up by some higher energy electron higher energy electron means electron from the valence orbital okay means along the along the outer periphery orbital so the valence orbital electron will come to fill that gap now whenever a higher energy orbital electron or higher energy electron comes to fill a gap of a lower energy orbital then actually x-ray is generated and this x-ray will be captured by some detector by some intelligent detector and that gives a spectra by some instrumentation technique we don't go into the more details of how that formed but that will generate some spectra and as this extra generations and uh, which type of what is the uh, energy of that x-ray that will depend the energy a level difference between the inner orbital and the outermost orbital outermost means from where the electron are coming to fill up the gap okay so that energy difference actually decides what will be the energy of that x-ray and that energy difference will be different for different atoms and that's why you will get different uh, energy extra generations for different atoms that's why the spectra which will be generated from the x-ray will be different for different atoms that's the main principle and now we will go in more details this is the characteristics x-ray generations as I have said the electron beam is coming here as the sky color uh, arrow I have shown here and now electron is going to ionized and as I have said electron from the atom this is denoting that electron are going to be ionized from the inner orbital and now a 
higher energy or higher energy electron uh, is coming to fill that gap and that has been shown in the uh, deep yellow and thus the generations of x-ray will be will happen and that has been shown by the light yellow so x-ray generations now by this you can do the generations of k alpha k beta or l alpha how does it come the name nomenclature this is actually nothing very easy that uh, this filling up of electron of the lower energy gap lower energy gap of the atomic orbital by a higher energy electron can happen in many ways let's say you have a vacancy in a k orbital in a k orbital which is the near or nearest orbital of the nucleus so let's say this gap has been happened in the k orbital and electrons are coming from any other higher energy orbital then i will say uh, that will be generations of k alpha and in some case and in some case and in some case uh, let's say this gap is uh, filling up at means gap is gap formation is happening at the l orbital and then higher some higher energy orbital which is greater than the l is coming to fulfill that gap then i will call l l alpha l alpha x generation and this alpha beta you know this as nothing uh, actually alpha means intense spectra intense generations of the x ray intensity of the l alpha is very high and l beta is quite low okay that's why the nomenclature comes that k beta means the gap has been happened in the k orbital and beta means intensity is not that much high l alpha means gap has been happened at the l orbital means l shell l shell of the electron orbital and uh, intensity is quite high that's why alpha if we have intensity high then alpha intensity low then beta and k l m that has been nomenclatured by from where your gap has been formed okay now if you go to the next slide this shows a uh, typical spectra which you will get from a silicon atom so this is the characteristics x-ray of a silicon which shows the k alpha you have l alpha you have and k beta k alpha and k beta you understand that gap has been formed in the k orbital k shell of electrons orbital and alpha means intense beta means low intense l alpha means from l orbital that gap has been formed means ionization of electron has happened by the primary or electron beam at the l shell of electrons and then some higher energy electron are coming to fulfill that gap okay so this is the uh, characteristics of that particular atom that's why by checking the spectra and uh, from the reference from the reference you can uh, conclude okay this spectra is concerns for the silicon atom this spectra concerns for the nitrogen atom like this you can identify the what the atom what atoms are present in the surface of the specimen now i will go through a uh, interactive video this is the animations which will help to give you a better understanding for the working principle let's check it primary electron beam fall on the specimen surface and there will be formations of the ionization ionization will happen along with the x-ray generation will happen now if we go to the atomic details the primary electron beam hits the inner orbital electron inertial electron will be ionized and then that uh, some higher energy electron will come to fulfill that gap by which generations of x-ray will happen and this x-ray will be captured by some detector and each element generate different types different energy of x-ray that's why you can get a clear idea which type of atoms you have present on the surface so that's all for for the concept of eds spectroscopy hope you understood the whole concept if you have any doubt you can just ask me can give in the question in the comment box and i will happy to answer thank you